Have you ever wondered how scientists can look at this massive sea of health data and somehow pinpoint the exact things that affect our health? Well, they have this amazing tool. It's kind of like a detective's magnifying glass, and it helps them find clues that are hiding in plain sight. Today, we are opening up that toolkit and taking a deep dive into regression analysis. So let's just jump right in with the big question that drives so much of this research. How do we go from just having a bunch of data to actually making predictions? You know, how can we forecast a patient's health risks or figure out who might need extra help? That's the exact puzzle we're going to tackle today. And the answer really is regression analysis. At its heart, it's just a way of finding the relationship between different things or variables. It helps us see connections that are not obvious at all. And that lets researchers explain and, even more importantly, predict health outcomes. Okay, let's start with the most basic tool in the whole kit, simple regression. Think of this as looking for a really clear one-to-one -one connection. We're just trying to see how one single factor might influence one single health outcome. Nice and simple. Now, in any investigation, you've got the mystery you're trying to solve, right? Well, in regression, we call that the dependent variable, or just why. It's the main thing, the outcome we want to predict. A perfect example? A patient's systolic blood pressure. That's the effect we're trying to figure out. And every mystery needs clues. That's our independent variable, or X. This is the factor that we think has an influence on our outcome. So, for example, if we're looking at blood pressure, a huge clue researchers look at is a patient's age. This is the potential cause we're using to make our prediction. And it all gets boiled down into this basic recipe for making a prediction. This is the simple regression equation. Here, y hat, and we say y hat, that's the predicted value of our outcome, like blood pressure. The x is our clue, like a person's age. And a and b are just special numbers the analysis calculates from the data that tell us the exact relationship between the two. But, I mean, we all know health is way more complicated than that, right? Something like blood pressure isn't just about age. What about diet or weight or stress? If we only look at one clue at a time, we're going to get a really incomplete picture. So what do we do? This is where we need to upgrade our tools a bit. Enter multiple regression. This is a huge leap forward because it's designed to look at many different factors all at the same time. It helps us get a much, much more complete picture of what's really going on. And this slide just lays out the difference perfectly. With simple regression, you've got a straight line, one factor, like age, predicting one outcome. But multiple regression, that's more like a web. It takes a whole bunch of factors, age, weight, whether someone smokes, and it weighs them all together to predict that single outcome. You can see the equation just kind of grows from the first one. We still have our predicted outcome, that y hat, but now instead of one x, we have a bunch of them, x1, x2, and so on. And each one is a different clue. Those b values are super important. They tell us how much weight or importance each of those factors has in the final prediction. But you can't just throw data at this thing and hope for the best. Like any powerful tool, there are rules you have to follow, some key assumptions. And this is so important because if you don't follow these rules, your results might not be reliable at all. It could just be statistical noise. So here are a few of the big ones. The model assumes the relationship is basically a straight line. Each piece of data has to be independent of the others. And third, the errors, you know, the small differences between the predicted values and the real ones, they have to be normally distributed. Now that sounds super technical, but it really just means that small misses are common and big misses are rare, making a classic bell curve shape. It's this kind of rigor that makes it real science. Okay, so a researcher runs the numbers, they check the assumptions, now what? How do they actually decode the results? How do you know for sure that the connection you found is real and not just some random coincidence in the data? Well, they get a summary that looks something like this. It's called an ANOVA table. I know, it looks a little intimidating, but it's all built to answer one question. Does our model, with all its clues, do a better job of predicting the outcome than pure random chance? The number to look for here is the F value. Think of it like a grade for our detective work. A high F value means our clues are probably important and our model is onto something. That F value then leads us to something called the P value. And the p-value is the real star of the show. It answers the million-dollar question. What's the probability that the relationship we're seeing is just a total fluke? What researchers are really hoping for is a tiny p-value. The gold standard, the number you always hear about, is less than 0.05. If your p-value is below that mark, it means there's less than a 5% chance the result is just random luck. And that's when scientists feel confident enough to say the finding is statistically significant. All right, that's enough theory. 
Let's make this real. Let's see how this incredible tool actually gets put to work in a real-world health study. Let's take a look at a study from 2003 in Seoul, South Korea. Researchers wanted to understand something really complex and human, the amount of stress and burden felt by people who are caring for elderly family members with dementia. So they used multiple regression to hunt for the key factors. So these were some of the independent variables, the clues that they plugged into their model. They looked at things like the patient's independence and their cognitive function, but also factors related to the caregiver, like their own level of depression and the amount of conflict within the family. They wanted to know which of these clues had the biggest impact on caregiver's stress. And this is why it all matters. This is the real power of regression. It helps public health move from just reacting to problems to actually predicting them. Once you can pinpoint what really drives caregiver stress, you can create smarter, targeted programs to help. It allows us to put our limited resources where they'll do the most good, saving money and, much more importantly, improving people's lives. So, when you boil it all down, regression isn't a crystal ball. It can't tell you any one person's future with 100% certainty. But what it does give us is the next best thing, a data-driven map. It helps us understand the complex forces that shape our health, and that allows us to start building a better, healthier future for everyone, one data point at a time.